Hey, this is Vinny Bob from Hell Yeah, and welcome to the Creepy Comic Show. Come on. We do have the boogeyman here in his new location here in uh, what is this echo park echo park los angeles this is his new location which i'm quite excited about uh we need more spooky kind of places to go out here and uh creepy places to frequent so um who is this here uh that's dorothy i've had her for 10 years or so she's she a good used to be woman. well well put together but well she's still looking she's pretty good old and let it let loose you know <laughs> <laughs> I like that her head's broken. She's a good-looking girl. Just, I know that you grew up in the uh, Northwest. We had this discussion yeah. previously. So, I mean, how did that kind of affect what it is that you're doing now in terms of, like, your goals and ambitions? Growing up in Seattle, I, I, I moved down here when I was, like, 19, 20. So I, did, I never really lived as an adult in, in Seattle and did adult-like things. Um, and I kind of grew up more on the, like, Hip hop side, really? then you know, and, and you know, later in my teens, I got into like rock and horror more, you know. Um, but I definitely grew up around the like break dancing, like real hip hop underground vibe. What years was that? I mean, I until I was probably about 15, 16 is when I really started getting into like the whole rock vibe. Dig it, man. But so, were you breaking? I couldn't because I, I grew up with a lot of Asians and Filipinos, which. Right. They were the break dancers. I think it's been like. And months. I was like one of the only white boys, kind of like with them. <laughs> like I'd bop and stuff a little bit, but I'm sure it looked stupid, you know. <laughs> the white boy can't jump kind of thing. I would be like, I also like, I was part of like the Filipino youth drill team. Really? Which I was again the only white guy there. Yeah, and, you're super. Not that's Filipino. what I. That's that's pretty much who I grew up with. Wow. Did um, the this the boogeyman clothing line and um, this whole thing kind of come to fruition? Again, back in Seattle, you know, late teens was when I really got into the whole horror vibe. You know, I always liked it growing up, but I wasn't really like collecting anything or whatever. Yeah. I had a really close friend, and his older brother. You know, he was I don't know five six years older than us, and he was. I remember he was like, he had everything for mm. You went to his apartment and it was just action figures and movies and all that, all this shit that you see here, but yeah. he had. And I remember, you know, that's, he's kind of got me into that stuff. Like, he, he was the first person I had, like, was like listening to Slayer with him. Oh, okay. Or, like, so he got you into rock and horror kind of simultaneously. I mean, he was just a drunk older brother of my friends, but like, <laughs> I thought it was so cool, you know? I mean, he, he I remember watching like a lot of 80s movies, Return of the Living Dead, Evil Dead, uh, Dead Alive, like yeah. stuff like that. Uh, the lawnmower. Yeah. And 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 I kind of, I guess I can give him credit for that. That's for the cool. first like, time of seeing all that shit. And he didn't even know how he influenced you. I guess he's not. Kind of a drunk older and I don't even have a clue where those those people are. I don't talk to anybody yeah. who I grew up with, so I don't even have a clue where he is. Yeah, you didn't go make it to your high school reunion? Yeah. No. You sure? I can care less. Come on! <laughs> I can really care less. Yeah, I don't blame but, you. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So then, how did we learn that in the clothing line? Well, and then later, you know, after a few years living down here, you know, I had a lot of friends in music and doing that stuff, and I wasn't really doing anything. Um, I kind of, I wanted to do a clothing line and a whole sideshow vibe, and so I started this. I, or I tried to start this 
brand company called Snake Lake Sideshows. And, you know, it basically, I basically wanted to have a traveling sideshow, you know, go to music festivals or wherever mm -hmm. and have like, I had no clue how to do this. I didn't really know anybody in the world. You know, I had one friend in Florida who half Jesse the half man. He's the only like sideshow guy I really knew. Yeah. It was Snake Lake sideshows. I remember making shirts, definitely not the right way. I, I, I used to get like some kind of fabric paint and then make my own stencils with an X-Acto knife, you know, just on some shitty staples paper or something, yeah. plastic. And would sponge like just use the sponge and the and the fucking ink to make a shirt. Yeah. It was shit. Double you know, I'd, I'd, I'd make some like Charles Manson t shirts or whatever, you know. Um, and then I'd go around, I'd set up a little booth at some of my friends' shows, you know, and I would sell shirts or whatever. You know, this was only a handful of times. But I, like, and I had a skeleton and they were like very minimal. But I thought, you know, so of course I was just drinking all the time and like, I never like finished that idea like it just kind of went away sure now, and that was about 10 years ago and now I'm doing this which I've done for you know I've had local boogeyman brand for about three years now right. um, and it's kind of what I always visioned 10 years ago I mean that without the sideshow traveling sure part, yeah. but like the clothing and I dig the theme. All like in fact I'm wearing a boogeyman shirt right yeah. now this is freak yeah. show it freak definitely show. depicts me as an individual I got this at uh, a magic show from this magic guy. Show in Vegas, um, yeah. And uh, I feel magic when I wear it. You know, my nipples are always popping. It feels good, man. Sure. Nipple popping. Nipple popping a good time here with the, with the boogeyman. Uh -huh. well, so, okay, so then let's just parlay this into, then how did you, uh, you know, garnish this relationship with the zombie family and camp who we've got mutual friends in and I who, see them zombie, wearing your what? stuff. Who's or, zombie? Yeah, the zombie thing. Well, I just, you know, I see like Robert Zombie, Robert. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, I see five wearing stuff, uh, yeah. Matt wears stuff. I mean, pretty much like Sherry, obviously wearing stuff. How is, uh, how did that happen? I don't know. It, it still, it still amazes me to be able to work with these people, like, you know, fans. I've been a fan of theirs forever, but, uh, I mean, I've always had some mutual friends, Good. you know, and then, uh, and then actually Matt, Piggy D was like the first guy who I kind of became friends with out of, you know, the band. Yeah. Um, yeah, and he, you know, he, he was wearing my shirts and wanted to come by and grab some. And and then we just kind of like talked, hung yeah. out for a bit, talked, got to know each other. And we've been friends since. And then, and then just from there, like, so he started wearing my shit on stage and stuff. And then like. So of course, like John saw that, I, you know, zombies. I think you know that's how they just all it's saw just this. Like, this is cool shit. I need to have yeah. some. And so like I yeah. met, then I like met John and talked with him, and then I did a shirt with him. You know, made, uh, was it a shirt? Was, shirt? Yeah, no, it said guitars, tits, and monsters. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like he wanted to make this shirt. I was like, all right, let's do that. Yeah, yeah. And then it had his face on the back. You know, just the X. You know, on his face, and it was cool. And then, and then from there, like. I made zombie, you know, yeah. like it just kind of like one after another, um, and kind of he kind of talked to me about doing a line together, you know, which was fucking awesome. Yeah. So then we we talked and tried to figure shit out and just planned to do like some, you know, uh, limited edition shirts of his movies or his songs or whatever. The 60s, 70s, and 80s horror films that you kind of were talking about, and you kind of threw it a few in there. What do you think really made like a huge impact as a kid that really kind of helped um, helped you in the direction that you're in right now? Uh, well, like I mentioned Pushed before, you. I mean, like those first few, you know, Evil Dead and Return of the Living Dead and Dead Alive, like I mentioned earlier, like those three kind of got me right away. Okay. Which, you know. Well, let's uh, jump into Return of the Living Dead because Matt and I had a conversation about this too. Yeah. And I think we're probably almost everybody I talked to. How will. can you not love it? You know what I mean? How about the music in that film? Did that influence you on the punk rock level? It's great. Like, not necessarily music, because I'm, I'm not really a punk head. I'm a fucking metal head. All right. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, like, I appreciate it. And, yeah, everything, the whole punk vibe of that movie is great. Yeah. It's so, it's so fucking punk rock. Yeah, totally. Like, like, I can't think of another movie that, that can 
compares to it in that sense. Yeah, and that was great the way they were able to add humor as well as yeah. like kind of violence and. Uh, They're just at the graveyard beauty. drinking all fucking, you know, like. It's cool. It's right, what about some of those like the splatter films? Like, I mean, did you get into the Friday the Thirteenth or? Uh, yeah, for sure. Any of that kind of stuff. I'm, I mean, it's it's typical. It is Halloween, Michael Myers. Yeah. Especially the original. I mean, I'd probably have to say that's my favorite one of all time. Mm -hmm. I mean, if not one, it's definitely number two. Really? I mean, I know Michael Myers is kind of the most one of the most common fucking boogeyman characters but yeah. like it's fucking amazing sure it's so good and same with friday the same with jason friday the 13th yeah. um you know uh both of those i love how campy they are i love it's just perfect okay so favorite know? aussie song if you have to pick like two show in the they? dark really probably okay yeah. that's cool what's the I mean, like, one? that whole album is probably my favorite I mean, because it's not the most, I mean, it's definitely not the common shit. Yeah, you know, but it's well produced. It's fucking great. Yeah. Well, that's cool. So Ozzy was a huge influence. Obviously, you love Slayer. Ozzy was the Did first. you like Venom? Venom's cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm pretty, like, Doom. Like, I'm, I'm a fucking BLS Doom crew forever. Yeah, that's cool. I mean? Well, I can dig it. You know, like, you know, fucking Ozzy and, and Pantera is, Pantera is the fucking... They're gods to me. Totally. You know what I mean? Like and that like the relationship simple, between Zach and Dimebag. Yeah, that big. kind of simple, just heavy fucking doom is my favorite shit. I could dig you it. You know? At your funeral party, which there probably would be some sort of a party as a result, not necessarily in celebration of your death, but just, you know, just something. Yeah. Uh, what would you think out of this run of films would you play? The Warriors, the original from the 70s, American Psycho. Mr. Bateman. Did they remake The Warriors? I don't know, but I, I won't watch yeah. it if they did. I'd say that's... They were going to do like an East Coast version. Really? Or no, sorry, an L.A. version. Oh, no, yeah, because yeah. it was East yeah. Coast, right? I don't know. I'm, I'm not so sure that's a good idea. That's like kind of like remaking you Rocky can't, Horror Picture yeah, shows. Yeah, you can't do it. Like, don't do it. Yeah, you yeah, can't just do Step it. away. Clockwork Orange, Mother Jugs and Speed, uh, The Original War Road Warrior, or, I don't even know you know this film, but The Incredible Melting Man from yeah, the, the Melting 70s. Man. I have a Lady. poster somewhere. Yeah? It's, it's, All right. I think it's in the back. What would you have played at your fucking funeral party? First, uh, none of those? None. He wouldn't have any of them. None uh, of those. I tried to pick some random stuff. Uh, okay, what would be played? It would, it would, you know, surprisingly, it would probably be like Wedding Crashers with Vince Vaughn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead serious. That I is never American, would have picked that. That is an American years. classic. I would probably have that because I, I like to laugh. I love comedies. Oh. But yeah. if it has to be horror. Um, well, I just picked some 70s stuff too. Like, Mother no, but as before, I'd in. probably do like the comedy of terrors then. Oh, yeah. Vincent Price. Okay. Because yeah. yeah. then I'll get my comedy and I'll get my horror. I, I can dig that, man. Which is also my favorite Vincent Price movie and probably in my top five movies. Okay. But are, you know, what would you say is your top like two comedians of all fucking time? Burning Mac? Yeah, the Mac Daddy. I'm fucking the Mac Daddy. Yeah. I actually I named my car the Burning Mac. Really? Yeah, you really can because it's kind of whatever. Anyways, yeah, Burning Mac for sure. Rest in peace. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I love and who doesn't? I love Seinfeld, the TV show, so much that I have to say Jerry Seinfeld yeah. is one of them. Um, although, you know, the show's better than his stand up, but it's I love him. Yeah. Um, I have to agree with you there. You know, it's weird, like, with He's him. He's so like, ironic. Anybody, I mean, like, from people like us to the most basic person in the world, like, you love Seinfeld. And, Jer like, who doesn't? Do you have some new, you're going to do some more stuff with Zombie? You got some stuff coming up? Yeah, we actually exclusive. put some, some Zomboogie classics today out, which Zomboogie's our name. It's Rob Zombie and Boogeyman together. Zomboogie, yeah. of course. And who created that moniker? I don't know. It just happened? I think just, we were just talking and it just, why not put the names together? It seems like a natural yeah, amalgamation. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, we, I mean, we just put some shirts out today, actually. Uh, I mean, there's no time. I mean, we'll just keep going with it yeah, until, we, until we rocking. both, until somebody gets bored first. Yeah, well, that's, you know, yeah, definitely keep it fresh. Or if, maybe he'll leave me for like, 
Gap or Levi or something. Perhaps, you know. They're maybe, making uh, more money than me. So. Ladies and gentlemen, I really appreciate uh -huh. your time. I appreciate your time, Boogeyman. Thank you so much. Yeah, just, you know, remember to uh, pick up some Boogeyman apparel websites. Website, uh, localboogeyman.com. Um, Instagram's Great White Grizzly. I don't know, don't ask me why. Um, come by the shop. It's on uh, it's Echo Park, Sunset Boulevard, 2151 Sunset Boulevard. Not too far from uh, Glendale Boulevard, yeah. Alvarado area. Yeah. So come on down and get your boogie on. Sean Common with the Creepy Common Show. Stay haunted and stay creepy. <laughs> stay cool, but don't freeze. That's what he says, man. Listen to the man. Don't freeze. Keep it cool. Hey, I'm going to break dance, homes. Die!